Aside from the action-packed moments of its fantastic prologue, I couldn't help but notice how much better Bayonetta 2 looks and plays than its predecessor, or most other action games for that matter. Impressively, Bayonetta just gets better from there. With the style, grace, and precision of a runway model, she sashays, punches, poses, and kicks her way through an outstanding 10-hour campaign full of grand set pieces and deadly angels and demons. Building on the original Bayonetta's strengths, Bayonetta 2's free-flowing combat remains its greatest asset. Each punch, kick, and weapon swing flows comfortably into the next empowering move. Everything moves at a fast and fluid 60 frames per second target, and this sequel feels supercharged thanks to excellent animation, more opportunities to cancel out of attacks mid-move to dodge, and fun weapons to unlock like the Rakshasa Blaze or the Chernobog Scythe. Each one has its own branching combos and can be mixed and matched to set up different styles of play. Building up combos feels natural, and it's invigorating to pull off long attack strings on a group of enemies. Perfectly timed dodges have a tangible reward thanks to Witch Time, a slow motion payoff that allows me to dig in and devastate angelic foes. Once I factored in the new Umbrian Climax, a high power release of demon summoning attacks, I had plenty of ways to embarrass the opposition. No matter how large the target got, my attacks could still send them reeling. Bayonetta's not overpowered. Even on normal difficulty, the enemies shouldn't be underestimated. The dozens of enemy types, from the small flying underlings to the large bosses themselves, have distinct attack patterns and signature tells that demand and reward your attention. Each boss has a cool and unique visual design, and no two behave the same way. The constant enemy variety makes me feel like I'm never fighting the same foe for too long or too often. Colorful cues help me understand what's going on at any given moment. Successful last second dodges set off purple hued slow motion moments. Demon enemies are basked in red light that reflects off their stylized mechanical bodies. And angelic minions have the sculptured look of mythic statues. The meticulous rating system gave me an incentive to aim higher and experiment with new combos and moves. Each chapter rates you based on time played, combo prowess, with penalties taken away for items or continues used. That performance might make the back page of the classified. It pushes you to do better with great rewards like score multipliers and extra currency to spend on new techniques, accessories, hilarious themed costumes, and items. Many elements of Bayonetta 2's presentation and mechanics are geared for hardcore action fans, but it attempts to embrace casual newcomers too, with mixed results. The gamepad focused touch control options use simple taps, holds, and swipes to send an AI-driven Bayonetta into attack. The alternate control scheme is a neat addition, but it doesn't hold up well with lots of enemies on screen because the camera has trouble keeping up. There's also an online-only scenario-based co-op mode that squeezes a little more out of Bayonetta 2's excellent combat. They're fun, but it's all over after just two or three minute bursts of action. Bayonetta's wicked weaves, transformations involving powerful demonic accomplices, punctuate the end of an action sequence, often skewering enemies in outrageous death traps. They create some of the most extravagant moments with gruesome enemy munching sequences like this. Watching the big bad boss I was just fighting turned into devilish lunch meat is a satisfying conclusion. But as much as I enjoy Bayonetta's over-the-top style, and I'm not too put off by her hypersexualized character design, it does have a bad habit of occasionally slipping into annoyingly juvenile territory with some bad attempts at humor. Forget about it. And what's this Ceresa sh On the other hand, the masked Lumen Sage presents an excellent foil to Bayonetta. The times I fought him felt tense, and he firmly stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with my heroine's high-powered abilities. The excellent combat of Bayonetta 2 is boosted by superb art direction and pacing, both of which make Bayonetta 1 look poor by comparison. Missions never let up, presenting more enemy types to fight across urban cityscapes, quaint mountain cities, and stylized interpretations of heaven and hell. Level designs give you room to take advantage of Bayonetta's shape-shifting abilities, so you can charge through as a panther or swim as a sea serpent.
Every aspect of Bayonetta 2 feels polished and focused. At times the writing feels ridiculous, but I still love how it plays. The superb pacing and combat are just that good. By the end I was convinced. The sequel builds on everything that made the original great and delivers one of the most satisfying action games I've ever played. For more on Bayonetta 2, you know where to keep it, right here at IGN.